Hi, my name is Greg, and today we're going to build the DIY vintage pinball kit. Uh, it's from Best Built Together. Uh, you, of course, could build this by yourself, um, but as the name says, it's Best Built Together. So today I brought with me my son Grayson, who's going to help me assemble it. Um, this product was inspired by a uh, a pinball game that I got as an heirloom from my grandfather, passed it on to my dad. I was going to pass it on to my son and then we saw it had a lot of wear and tear. So we had the idea that, hey, what if we built a kit that you could make your own heirloom pinball game? So uh, today uh, we're going to uh, build it. The first step will be... Hold on dad, I got this. So the first step is to lay all the parts out. On page three is the part list. Step one, first in step one and two, you lay the part called the scallop against the inside edge. And then you do the same with the part called the gauge. And the next thing, you line the nail pattern sheet, number one, inside carefully inside the corner, number two right next to it when the lines match up, and the same for number three. Then you tape. For the next step, you can remove the scallop piece and turn the gauge piece on its edge. We're going to use this as a tool to measure how far you want the nail into the wood. So before we begin nailing, I want to point out a few things. First of all, we're doing this in the studio. At home, you're going to want to do this on your workbench, uh, not on a, a nice table like this. The gauge piece is going to be used, like Grayson said, to limit how deep the nails will go into the base board. Um, however, if you do hammer it too deeply, you can turn the board over and then hammer the nail back through. The other thing that we'll use the gauge for will be to keep the nail straight. Um, you wanna make sure that the nails go in uh, perpendicular and that they're not curved. It won't really affect the performance of the board, but it'll look a little bit goofy if you do. This part, nailing in the entire pattern, does take about 45 minutes. You might want to switch off uh, the task of doing that. But for the sake of time, uh, we're not going to uh, nail them all in right now. We are going to show you what the pattern looks like once it's complete. Once you've fully nailed in all the patterns, you can simply tear away the piece. And I'll try to also get the tape too, so you don't have to do any of the work, but yeah. The next step is to grab the two large radius pieces and line them up with the inside edge. Next, you're going to grab the right side wall and press down with your hand until it fits. So next, you're going to take the scallop pieces and line them up on the inside edge. And make sure this line here is the line up on the edge of the board. And then you're going to take the opposite side piece of the wall and push down with your hands. It's hammer time! And it's also time for safety. So at this point, I think we're going to put on our goggles. Okay. So now you're going to face nail a nail 
right into the large radius. Hold on one second. I'm going to hold and make sure everything's aligned before he starts hammering. Great. And now we're going to do the opposite side uh, with the scallop pieces. Next, I'm going to hold the scallop pieces in place while Grayson places one of four nails into the scallops and into the base. In our next step, we're going to place the most important nail in the piece. This is the nail that all the marbles will end up ricocheting off of. Um, what we're going to do is take the side rail, just bend it down like that for now, and from the end we're going to measure two and a half inches and place the nail right there. Now we're going to put the side rails on. We're going to flip this back into place and turn it up on its edge. We're going to make sure everything's in alignment and then Grayson will hammer one nail into each of the three tabs across. When he's done with that, we're going to flip it back this way and do the same thing on this side making sure everything's in alignment, and then again, one, two, three nails across the side. Once the sidewalls are nailed in, then we're going to go ahead and place the top rail. The top rail is the one without the hole. Put that into position, put this into position. The hole is going to line up right here with the opening between the scallops and the outside wall. The next step may be the most difficult part of the assembly and I'd recommend that the uh, adult uh, do this part. You're going to connect the bottom rail to the side rail right next to the opening with uh, the hole opening here. You may want to consider using wood glue at this point. You may also want to consider pre-drilling using a 1 16th bit um, to lessen the likelihood that there'll be any splintering. Once that nail is put in, you're going to put in three other nails. One right here, one right here, and finally one here across the bottom. Then we're going to switch it, go back to the top and do the exact same thing, placing the four nails here, 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 and here. Now we're going to put in the shooting lane wall, but I would recommend using some wood glue at this point. We're going to place glue here, here, and here, and this is going to fit snugly into the pre-cut slots, and then I would say we should use some clamps. Uh, to allow it to uh, dry. All right, then we're going to assemble the riser. This is really easy. You're just going to place the feet into the two slots. And then what this does, it provides the incline. Go ahead. That's adjustable. So this is going to help um, modify the performance of the game, uh, depending on where you place the riser. So when it's all done, it's actually going to look like this. Thank you. As you can see, the whole nail pattern's in there. And this is going to be your cue stick. I'm going to turn this around. And you're going to take the marbles, or maybe I should let you do it. Place a marble in there. You can place the cue stick through the hole or over the top and deploy it. Okay. So included in the package is a strip of star stickers and you can use those stickers to assign points to each of the goals that you've created in the nail pattern. Another way to alter the performance is to add rubber bands and change the trajectory of the game by adding new obstacles. Yep, you can do twosies or threesies. There's a, a lot of ways to, to vary up the game. Um, but there you have it. This is the uh, do-it-yourself vintage pinball game uh, by Best Built Together.